By combining the proper placement of the ball, foot position, and the straightness of form, Ray maximizes power while creating a natural spiral. With high-speed filming, we can actually show you how Ray Guy achieves this aerodynamic rotation. Beginning with the initial forward step and throughout the entire punting motion, everything should be in a direct line and towards a target. This includes steps, hips, shoulders, leg swing, punting foot, and follow through. All should be in a direct line and square to the target. Now that we've covered the step, the plant foot, the drop, the ball foot contact, and the follow through, I want to go back and review all these areas covering one aspect of it, and that's the body directional, uh, which way you're kicking. And the reason I'm saying this, you need your shoulders and your body weight going in the direction that you want to kick. For example, if you're kicking straight, you want to step straight down the field, you want to make contact, follow through, and then when you finish, your shoulders should be still in the line in the direction you're kicking. You do not want to finish in this manner. This tells you that, that something has gone wrong. You either pull the ball or shank the ball. You want to keep your shoulders square on line. If you're going to the left, you want to turn your whole body, your shoulders in line in the direction you want to kick, and you want to follow through, be right on the line, and your shoulders square. Same for the right. You want to turn in the direction you want to kick, your shoulders square, you step, the follow through, and finish should be right on that line with your shoulders square. This matter. This tells you that, that something has gone wrong. You either pull the ball or shank the ball. You want to keep your shoulders square on line. If you're going to the left, you want to turn your whole body, your shoulders in line in the direction you want to kick, and you want to follow through, be right on the line, and your shoulders square. Same for the right. You want to turn in the direction you want to kick, your shoulders square, you step, the follow through, and finish should be right on that line with your shoulders square. If you'll remember this, to keep your body and your shoulders square on even the line that you want to go, you'll have a, a successful kick. There's a drill that you use. It's, it's, a, it's a line drill where you actually, you're passing the, the ball. Uh, explain how you, how you do that and the purpose of that. Well, the reason that we do that, and, what, and when you say a line drill, what we do is, is take the lines on a football field, and we actually step down the line, uh, myself and another punter or somebody else to, to help me. And all that, that basically is doing is keeping me going in a direction that I want to kick. It's making me mentally uh, to visualize when I'm out on a field where I want to kick and where, I, where my body needs to be, where my shoulders need to be pointed, where my hips need to be pointed, and then we constantly just step down this line, step down this line, and it gets you into a pattern or a repetition of stepping straight. Yo, what's up, guys? Hope you enjoyed. This is I Kick. This I, is I Kick underscore training on Instagram. Make sure to join up ASAP, ASAP, um, and here is a full example of pretty much a f uh, quick session uh, of one of my uh, training, virtual training sessions that I can do even through COVID. So, best to add it, best to doing it. And I can do it right now with Corona going around. Like, come on into uh, iKick underscore training become a part of the next greatness my real life at kinfolk kicks thanks my brothers and sisters straight into uh, doing a little bit of help for uh, this clip. Okay, so. Where is he? Where do you start at? You already started back? I don't know. You do your steps. Do you? The most important part of the punt is the drop, and there's several reasons for it. When you're kicking a field goal, that ball is stationary. So whether it's an extra point or a field goal and a holder's holding the ball, that ball's still. On a kickoff, the ball's on a tee, the ball's still. When you're punting, it's not like that. The ball's moving. Your body's moving, your legs are moving, your arm's moving, and you're trying to put that ball out in front of you. And so it's critical that the drop is there so that you get the right angle of the football off your foot so you can put it where you want it to go. You ask many NFL punters, college punters, what drill or what is it that they spend the most from time Launchpad on? Launchpad Products with the all-new Launchpad Kickoff Tee. Hello, I'm Bill Schaefer from Launchpad Products, 
with the all-new launch hello I'm Bill Schaefer from Launchpad products with the all-new Launchpad kickoff tee and today we're here at Green High School in beautiful Northeast Ohio to talk about a question we've been getting from some of our kickers in the field Mike in Anaheim Hills California asks how do you actually use the launch pad to maximize your hang time and your distance well today we'll demonstrate that if you'll step over to the 40 yard line when kicking this direction the conventional set requires that you lean the ball backwards slightly to the right or to the left depending on a right or a left footed kicker but with the launch pad finally a kicker is able to take advantage of a forward lean when in use this creates a much greater segment of power transfer from your foot to the ball creating more hang time and more distance than ever before does this really work let's just go ahead and demonstrate all the way to the goal line. Get your launch pad today by going to www.launchpadkickoff.com. Stationary. So whether it's a extra point or a field goal and a holder's holding the ball, that ball's still. On a kickoff, the ball's on a tee, the ball's still. When you're punting, it's not like that. The ball's moving. Your body's moving, your legs are moving, your arm's moving, and you're trying to put that ball out in front of you. And so it's critical that the drop is there so that you get the right angle of the football off your foot so you can put it where you want it to go. You ask many NFL punters, college punters, what drill or what is it that they spend the most time on trying to improve as a punter and 100 percent of them will tell you that it's the it's the drop so what we're looking to try and do with our punt is we're trying to get that ball out in front of us if this is the ball perfectly straight out in front angle straight downfield we're going to turn this nose of the ball the front of the ball just slightly in and slightly down to maximize that angle off our foot as we swing up and through the ball we're going to extend that ball straight out right out here on a level plane we want as little movement as possible we don't want the ball moving up and down we don't want to catch it we don't want to bring it in close to our body we want the ball as still as we can, starting right from here as we catch it and extending it straight out in front of us. We don't want to throw the ball up in the air. We don't want to throw it down. You think of, hear the word drop and you think of the ball coming straight down, but actually you're extending it straight out on an imaginary uh, table. It'd be like you're, you're passing the salt shaker and you're sliding it off that table. That's what you're doing with this football and sliding it off there in order for your foot to reach out there and punt the ball. So the hand position is critical with the drop. I recommend either a handshake grip coming from the side so your thumb is on the side seam and your middle finger is on the side seam. Or an underneath grip, underhand grip, where all four fingers are underneath the football and my thumb is here on top. Either way, it's just a matter of personal preference, but what we don't recommend is having your hand on top of the football so that, uh, one, it's really tough to get the ball out comfortably out in front of you, and two, if it's wet conditions, that ball is going to be tough to grip. So that side grip is right here or the underneath grip right here. But we want to make sure that ball is um, not in our palm and not too far out in our fingertips either. It's, it's kind of right in between in a comfortable spot where we can control the ball. Now that you have a better understanding of where the ball should be coming out of your hand, what level to drop it, how to drop it, and the consistency of what it takes to become a good punter, now is the time when you would go out, start hitting the ball off your foot to get that spiral, replicating that, that spiral every time to be consistent as a punter. You ask any college and NFL punter what they practice the most, there's no question, it's the drop. So you're not going to weigh your leg out by practicing the drop too much. You write down the sidelines of a field as much as you can during your downtime, you want to spend as much time as you can dropping the football if you're going to become a good punter. Next, we're going to talk about receiving the snap. Worthy of this, uh, our punter heading on in. There's three 2014.
to the goal line. Get your launch pad today by going to www.launchpadkickofftee.com and we look forward to working with you bringing the kicking game into the 21st century. Yo, what is up? What is up? What is up, guys, gals, boys, girls, whatever. Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy, Cole, CEO of iKick Training. Um, I just wanted to put a little uh, questionnaire uh, kind of uh, vid out there wondering if people would um, be interested in uh, coming in like Zoom sessions and uh, uh, potential group uh, group group Zoom sessions to talk uh, special teams, kicking, punting, uh, any of that good stuff. So to get to, uh, back to the ASAP, uh, anyone that... Uh, finds this interesting at all in any way um and uh um hope to um uh, grow uh, my trainee uh spots uh, pretty quickly spots are filling up quick so make sure to dm if you're interested in uh potentially talking joining uh i kick make sure to dm at i kick underscore training that is i kick underscore training thank you Yeah. 1.5 million to school. I'll give, I'll give him 10 grand. Yeah. <laughs> I get school 10 grand. Yeah. That's a lot of the money. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Oh, that's the I'll argument. Give $10,000. I know. I think the yeah. 1.5 million to school. I'll, I'll give him 10 grand. Yeah. <laughs> I get school 10 grand. That's yeah. a lot of the money. What about assholes. The people who, um, who really argue the free education thing and like how that should be a value is because they ain't worth a shit. Like that's why they <laughs> think that's awesome. Yeah. Like your skill level. Is not impressive, right? And you don't generate millions and billions of dollars, so you go, it's fucking hundred thousand dollars worth of uh, free education. There, it's like, yeah, but like, I'm bringing ten million to the table, bro. Right. That's the thing. And here's the big thing: how much damage are they getting in that four years? How much damage are they doing to the oh, body in football? Yeah, <laughs> in high level Division One FBS football, a lot of those dudes are playing. I mean, they're playing basically with you know the the, the next NFL player. So yeah, they're yeah they're fucking each other up. They're fucking each other up, yeah. and the odds of their body getting damaged to the point where they oh. never compete professionally are very high. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So if you think of like there was a statistic about NBA or excuse me NFL players, like how many of them make it into the fourth year, and it's very low. Yeah, the not for long league. That's very, what they call it. Yeah, is that what they call it? that's a nickname for the NFL. Ooh. Not for long. Yeah, the wow. average NFL career is like three point some seasons. So, right. Yeah, yeah. So think of that. You're, you're basically trying to do, to outrun that through college. Yeah. And then make it into the pros. Yeah, that's why you really, from a business perspective, you really have to support guys coming out of college early to the NFL. Oh, 100%. I mean, there's people who are like, some people are What about guys? Get the fuck out of here. I'll read a book. Yeah. Well, I'm balling, bitch. I'll, I'll go back. <laughs> go back with my free time, man. <laughs> yeah, go back. You're still only going to be 25 years old when your career's over. That's fucking nuts. I know. Yeah. There's millions on the table. Millions. Yeah. You're 22. Come on. Although, do you ever think about Ooh. how poorly you would handle that? I think about it now a lot. If I had been 22 and, and someone, rich? Was, yeah. someone was like, here's $10 million, I'd be like, what? I would yeah. definitely not have been like, yeah, dude. able to handle that well. Yeah, I think about that hardcore. I think about, like, what if I won the lottery when I was 20? Like, what? You go know. nuts. You go nuts. Yeah. I got diamonds in my jacket, man. Check I got it out. diamonds on my teethus. My buttons are all diamonds. I got diamonds on my dick hole. Definitely. Yeah, yeah I think, um, it's like we were talking about earlier about a guy being rich and having rich children. <laughs> Struggle is fucking very important for you. Yeah. It's very good for you. It's very important for you. It builds character. It builds resolve. Respect. You know? Yeah. Yeah, respect money. Like, that, how many professional athletes who make millions of dollars work out as hard as my friend Cameron Haynes? Right. Think of that. That fucking guy's a regular job, dude. Works for the Department of Water and Power in Oregon. Does he really? Yep. Nine to five. Regular job. During his lunch hour, he, he doesn't work nine to five. He works like seven to four. And one of the reasons why he's got an extra hour in there is because he runs during his lunch break. So he takes like two hour lunches and runs for two fucking hours. Runs the hills and then comes back. And finishes out the rest of the eight hours of the day. I thought that dude feels good all day, though. It's a savage. Yeah. He doesn't feel good. He doesn't want to feel good. He's he's in pain? He all the time. Pain. Yeah. <laughs> but he's happy, I'm saying. He's happy in pain. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, he, he's not, he gets he's not shit done. grimacing in pain. He's like, this shit hurts. <laughs> Let's look like hey! Let's look like hey! Alright!
yourself back up through your heels. Uh, using your arm, you can hang onto a bar. Simply assist yourself up until you build a leg strength muscle, or you can do it without hanging onto the pole. Kettlebell swing, it's a great exercise for hip explosion. Uh, basically, we want to lower the kettlebell between our legs, keep our hamstrings tight, feel them stretch at the bottom, and then quickly explode up, pop your hips through in the top of the movement, and then make sure your body stays upright, push through the, through the heels into the ground. You don't want to lean back in this exercise and at the top of the motion, explode with the hips, that's important, keep your body nice and tall. Push up, hold, twist is a great exercise to uh, work on the hip strength, oblique strength, core strength, also shoulder stability, just overall having nice tall. Uh, posture when you're kicking. This will help strengthen a lot of the muscles that are utilized. Uh, you can do it simply, uh, just like Austin is doing it here, without any weights, or to make it more challenging, grab a 10, five pound dumbbell in your hand, do exactly the same movement. The key is start with your hands about shoulder width apart, feet a little bit wider as you reach up towards the ceiling, kind of simply rotate your feet as well, keeping the whole body nice and firm. You want to have a straight line between your heels and your head. Single leg, straight leg deadlift is an exercise that works the balance, also works the muscles on the outer edge of your uh, plant leg, which is excellent for kickers, uh, strengthens you so that your uh, lean is strong, you can swing your foot through nicely. Basically, you're gonna lower the dumbbell towards your down leg, you're gonna keep the back leg as straight as possible, keeping a straight line between your heel and your head. Basically, just bring the dumbbell down towards your foot that is on the ground, the leg that is down, and bend, you wanna keep the back leg as straight as possible. Um, have your dumbbell, obviously, the more challenging the exercise. You wanna try to get about 10 in a row. If you have to put your foot down between reps, go ahead. Single leg slide squat is a great exercise, works on the strength um, of, of basically quads and glutes and balance at the same time, uh, especially on the outer edge of your plant leg. Um, simply, you want to slide your foot out uh, and do a one-legged squat on the other leg, uh, bringing the dumbbell pretty much right towards the middle of your body. This is easier done if you were to wear socks and do it on a hardwood floor. It's very smooth. Or to make it more challenging, instead of sliding your leg out, you can just simply uh, hover it right above the ground. Hanging knee raises is a great exercise to strengthen the lower lower body, core, uh, a lot of muscles using kicking. You want to basically hang from a bar and bring your knees towards your elbows, just like that. Um, if you like the grip strength to do this exercise, you can use one of those, uh, um, I guess, uh, hooks where you kind of put your elbows in and kind of do them that way. Uh, the, so this is the correct way, knees all the way to the elbows. The incorrect way is just simply bring your knees up, which this simply just works in the hip flexors, which are weak muscles, will uh, drain pretty quickly, and you won't really get the core exercise that you, or core strengthening that you need. S single leg step ups, um, very simple exercise. Uh, here, uh, Austin is doing without any dumbbells, but uh, that's the way to do this exercise, is just simply hanging on to a dumbbell in each hand and just keep simply keeping your hands along the side of your body. When you step up, you want to make sure you stay tall, bring your knee up. All the way to the goal line. Get your launch pad today by going to www.launchpadkickofftee.com and we look forward to working with you, bringing the kicking game into the 21st... Get your launch pad today by going to www.launchpadkickofftee.com and we look forward to working with you bringing the kicking game into the 21st century.